Melvin Mater Johnson didn't have great success with his model of 1941 rifle or light machine gun. He hoped that his Spitfire carbine would tap into a new breed of interest in small bore cartridges. Sadly, it's now a firearms curiosa. One of the great unsung heroes of firearms and ordnance design of the 20th century is Melvin Maynard Johnson. People know him because of the fact that he designed the 1941 Johnson rifle, the Johnson light machine gun. But Melvin Johnson uh, came up with another, of, another series of innovative designs, uh, designs that didn't really take off and didn't really go anywhere for him. And one of the more notable ones is the design of the 5.7 by 33 millimeter MMJ cartridge. MMJ standing for Melvin Maynard Johnson. He was fascinated by, by the small caliber, uh, high velocity concept that others had been uh, tinkering with. Uh, the Army had, in, in the persona of William C. Davis Jr. and some others, were experimenting with uh, converting M1 carbines to uh, fire a small caliber, high velocity cartridge, which they were developing from the ground up. They, nobody had done anything like that before. They thought it held great promise, and they were playing with it. Uh, Johnson probably knew about these efforts and had his own ideas, as usual, about how to proceed. And he decided to take the 30 caliber carbine cartridge and neck it down to 22 caliber. And then uh, the M1 carbine was a perfect platform uh, for that cartridge. Johnson was an interesting guy. I, I, I would love to be able to read a, uh, a decent biography of him, uh, the man, the inventor, the uh, innovator. He'd been working most of his whole life in firearms design and, and really struggled to, uh, to come up with something that uh, was unique, but also uh, practical and, and most importantly, uh, a purient to the time, something that was necessary. With the, uh, with the, the little Spitfire, the Wildcat cartridge, a 40 grain bullet developed you know, nearly 3,000 uh, feet per second initial uh, muzzle velocity uh, was quite a, quite a little cartridge. It was not in the same class as today's uh, 5.56 millimeter cartridge, but it was one of those uh, projects that uh, uh, kind of showed the way. And he tried to market the M1 carbine uh, rebarreled for this, this new cartridge that he had wildcatted and did not meet with a great deal of success. Today, it, it's sort of a curiosity. It was one of those uh, milestones, a small one. Melvin Johnson recognized that six million M1 carbines had been produced during World War II, that, but there was also the M2 carbine, the select fire version of the M1, and that by chambering it for this small caliber high velocity cartridge, he could enhance its performance greatly. His objective in designing this was that he would get a customer out of the American military, and he approached the American military attempting to sell them this 5.7 millimeter, what he called the MMJ cartridge. Well, by approaching the, the U.S. government's Advanced Research Projects Agency, he submitted a proposal that, that suggested that M1 carbines come in for refit, that they would be given this new barrel, necking it down to the 22 Spitfire cartridge, um, and producing a special purpose individual weapon that fired a small caliber high velocity bullet. And when he offered this to the United States government, it's being proposed at about the same time that this other weapon was being considered by the U.S. military, the AR-15. Melvin Johnson just, just never quite made it. His ideas were there. In so many ways, Melvin Johnson was ahead of his time. How he shot machine guns, he was uh, uh, leaning into them. He, he really had some great ideas that sadly just never really materialized uh, in terms of widespread adoption. The Johnson Spitfire carbine presaged the U.S. military and the world moving to smaller bore, high velocity cartridges. But sadly, Melvin Johnson really never got a piece of that. 
So Johnson's company starts making receivers, starts making the 22 Spitfire barrel, and they begin this process of attempting to market this weapon to a civilian shooting public. As Melvin Johnson originally designed it, it was a short-barreled rifle with a folding stock. In fact, it was a short-barreled rifle with an overall barrel length of less than 16 inches. And therefore, those early Johnson Spitfires were subject to the rules of the National Firearms Act of 1934, the NFA. They were considered Class III weapons. He realized that the Class III world was going to be too narrow. And so what Johnson's company ultimately does is they develop a full-length M1 carbine version that they can sell as a semi-auto to the commercial civilian shooting public. He even gets crafty and, and offers one that's kind of a standard model. He also then uh, put together a deluxe model, a deluxe sporter model as they called it. The Spitfire carbine does not make a big splash. It is for that reason that the Spitfire carbine remains today somewhat of an obscure firearm. You'll see them every now and then at a gun show. Maybe you'll encounter one somewhere. There were companies that were, as recently as 10 years ago, selling M1 carbine barrels in 22 Spitfire. But they're still out there, and they're still pretty impressive. And yes, it's a footnote to the development of the M1 carbine, but it's a darn interesting footnote, and it's a lot of fun to shoot them. And if you ever have the opportunity to buy a Johnson Spitfire M1 carbine, do it because they're great. They shoot flat, they shoot fast, and there's very, very little recoil. Plus, you get to use all your M1 carbine magazines.